Okay, thank you. Uh, and thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Simon Brown. I'm the uh, Artifact Loans Officer for Nottingham City Museums and Galleries, as it says there. My contact details are there as well. Um, so if ever you want to get in touch with me about this or anything else, then uh, please take me up on that. And also, if you, I, I hope you have questions later on. Um, and I feel, before we do that, I must apologise because I have to put my glasses on and I'll demonstrate. <laughs> If you learn nothing else from me, it's the dangers of allowing your three-year-old son access <laughs> to these things, which we should, as curators and archivists, already know, but I obviously didn't. <laughs> um, so yes, I'm going to speak about the uh, Universal Roots project that was delivered in partnership with Nottingham City Homes in uh, 2012 and 2013. It was an ambitious and wide-ranging project uh, managed by my colleague, Melissa Lewis, who is conveniently on maternity leave, so that's why you've got me. So I'll speak about that and my own role within it. And I'll also speak about the outcomes and any learning that has resulted from the project as well. So as I say, if you wish to discuss anything with me, then uh, please do contact me by email or on Twitter. So my role, uh, this is a picture of the museum store I work in. It was tarted up for an open evening, so it's normally more, <laughs> more reassuringly chaotic <laughs> than that. I manage the uh, Access Artifacts Handling Collection at Nottingham City Museums and Galleries. I'll shorten that to NCMG, just to help. I know we all love a good acronym. Uh, this is a collection of uh, 11,000 unaccessioned objects that is held in an off-site store in the grounds of Woolerton Park in Nottingham, which is a wonderful uh, surrounding to work in, if any of you know Woolerton Park. It's a real art, um, well, A to Z collection, archaeology to zoology, uh, as you can see from there. There's a mix of social history, uh, world cultures, taxidermy, geological and biological specimens, archaeological and other objects. The collection is kept separate from the accession collections so that it can be used for handling. And we are funded by Arts Council England to uh, manage the collection as a loan service for schools and community groups in Nottingham and the surrounding area. For example, we can uh, cover almost every aspect of the national curriculum for history from key stages one to three. We're pretty much unique in the country for uh, having a handling collection of this size and depth and including original objects as well. I'm sure you're all familiar with handling objects within other, or other orga organisations, um, but this is managed by paid staff as well, so that's fantastic. So from the collection, we develop themed resource boxes that contain around 15 to 20 objects alongside a written information pack containing activities and object information as well. So as I say, those schools' resources can meet the needs of the national curriculum. And here are some examples. Um, those are photographs of groups of objects that reflect specific themes. The schools' resource boxes meet the need of the schools' curriculum, uh, and the community resource boxes are packaged to reflect a specific theme or user group. So, for example, we have one resource box on the archaeology of the city of Nottingham, for those who are interested in that. And we also have another resource box that um, has the aim of meeting the needs of adults with mental health issues as well, just to give two examples. We also have a range of reminiscence boxes that are used in care homes and with people living with dementia. Um, as many of you will know, this is a real developing area of museums' work. Um, the fantastic House of Memories project uh, National, Liver National Museums Liverpool is a good example of that. We've worked with them on that. Um, and it really helps us uh, meet the health and well-being needs of the people of Nottingham. So as part of my work, the objects are painstakingly and back-breakingly packed in plaster zote um, and metal flight cases, so they're safe for loan. So um, we have remarkably few breakages and uh, losses, such wood. Um, we do very well for that. So just to prove that the objects are in use, <laughs> those are some examples for you. So as well as providing this service to the public, uh, the collection is ideally placed to be used as part of any community engagement projects or museum events that are being organised across NCMG's six museum sites. And one example of that is the Universal Roots Project. So I'll speak a little bit about that now. This is uh, the Yard Gallery space in uh, Woolerton Park that was used as part of the project, and I'll come on to that specifically. 
So the seeds for the Universal Roots project were sown in 2009, as far away, a long, <laughs> it was a long time ago. African Caribbean tenants from the uh, Black and Minority Ethnic Forum at Nottingham City Homes uh, worked with NCMG on a project called From the Sunshine to the, to the Snow. And this told the stories of uh, their migration to Nottingham in the 1950s and 60s. So it told very individual stories uh, from people who were tenants of Nottingham City Homes. And that resulting exhibition was a, a great success. And the display panels came into the Access Artifacts collection and are now loaned across the city as a travelling exhibition as part of our loans framework. So the tenants involved uh, wanted to develop this project into a wider look at the city's diverse communities and their journeys to Nottingham, rather than just individual stories. And this formed the basis for Universal Roots. So the resulting project involved 62 people from 15 different cultural backgrounds, all of them tenants of Nottingham City Homes, and the overall project was managed by my colleague Melissa. We were very grateful to be funded uh, by Arts Council England for the programme as well, which um, Arts Council and HLF are developing themes of the day, I found. <laughs> so the specific outcomes of the project were two exhibitions at Nottingham Castle and this one at Woolerton Park. The exhibitions were called Boots and Roots and that's where the exciting shoes came in, as you can see on display there. Also, we have uh, 16 recorded and transcribed oral histories from people on the project. And those oral histories were used in the exhibitions as well and are also part of our uh, resource box. And the education resource box within the Access Artifacts collection is the uh, outcome that I worked on. So the group of volunteers was divided into uh, sub-teams, for want of a better phrase, uh, that worked on specific parts of the project with professionals. So that's interesting what you said, Tamsin, about having paid people working on the project and having an equitable relationship. That was important to us as well. Uh, so it's good to hear that. <laughs> so this included um, elements such as marketing and exhibition design. And the whole project was marketed this way and uh, managed this way as well. So, for example, the uh, exhibitions team worked with colleagues in the curatorial department to choose objects to display and to write new interpretation. They took the decision to base the exhibition around uh, shoes in NCMG's costume and textiles collection. So that was the decision of the users rather than uh, any curators. The photography team worked with a professional photographer to take images that were also displayed as well, and you can see them on the walls there. And copies of those photographs have gone into our loans resource. The wonderful thing to witness about this project was seeing such a diverse group of people come together and to learn new skills and have that shared experience of learning. The only thing that linked them prior to that was their enthusiasm. And that was a real uh, visible <coughs> manifestation of impact. We talk about impact a lot, don't we? And I saw that in the way that people grew throughout the project. It was wonderful. So the resource box, this is a, an image of the resource box. As I say, they are normally packed um, back-breakingly by me in plaster zot, um, which we're still woman and are in whether to do with this because the uh, case in which the objects are held is an object within itself. It seems obvious to use a suitcase um, as a repository. So suggestions are welcome as to how to do that safely. Email me if you know anything. So my role within that project was to work with the resource box team to develop a resource that will be available for loan in schools and in community groups. This was an open brief for us because we are normally very specific in our audience. We develop a resource for schools or communities, um, either taking the uh, national curriculum as our base document or a community group's needs. So this was a very broad brief, but one that the group reacted very well to. So they wrote object information cards and planned activities for future users of the resource. So the way the project worked was that we held six workshops in our store, the store that I showed you earlier, where the group discussed the kinds of objects they would like to include and the stories they would like to tell. We deliberately avoided the shoes theme 
for this resource, as it was decided by the group that this wouldn't provide enough variety for a handling resource. As we discussed ideas, I was able to bring out objects from the collection that I felt may reflect these conversations. So it was important for me to really know <laughs> the collection and to kind of be able to search the database off the cuff as well. The group then each chose a small group of objects to research and write about, and we narrowed the selection down to a final resource. So for example, uh, our discussions frequently focused on the jobs that people did when they arrived in the city at whatever time that was. One volunteer, Mrs Anderson, told us that she worked as a nurse at the Coppice Hospital in Nottingham in the 1960s and 70s. And we have a nurse's badge from this hospital in the collection, so we included it in the resource as a vehicle for her to tell that story. So you'll probably guess what the, the pictures are. There's the badge at the bottom, and that's an image of the Coppice Hospital that's now, uh, it's now flats actually, sadly. So it was fantastic to be able to tell that story. Once that group of objects had been loosely decided, we took them to a library group and to two primary schools in Nottingham to discuss them as a form of pilot, if anything. So we visited a conversation group in St Anne's Library in Nottingham, uh, which is a weekly drop-in group for new arrivals in the city for whom English is a second language. So the idea for them was to just practice their spoken English and what they ask for is a catalyst for conversation. So our collection is a fantastic thing for them because we can just take one object and just let them discuss it. So it was brilliant. In fact, the session was really good and um, they insisted on taking a photograph outside the library afterwards. They were, they were quite emotional as to how successful the uh, session was. It's only when I see pictures of myself in a large group that I realise how tall I am. <laughs> I'm not stood on anything there. <laughs> <laughs> so again I saw that impact I saw and it's the attraction of working in museums I saw the impact of bringing out one museum object and the reaction of oh, these people are from all over the world um, and it was great to see people's different emotional reactions to objects such as that copies hospital badge and different things as well as the library we visited uh, two primary schools in Nottingham as I say Seeley Primary and Rufford Primary which are both within the city of Nottingham. And we ran two classroom sessions to pilot the classroom activities that the group had wrought. The group really enjoyed this and thankfully the children reacted favourably as well. Uh, that's what they were most nervous about really. It was a valuable experience for the group and they were gushing in their admiration for teachers afterwards, which was a good, a good outcome as well. These pilots completed the development process and the resource is now available for loan to schools and community groups and is in fact out on loan at the moment. We even won an award for Nottingham City Homes Community Awards in March for the project so I, I promised Melissa that I would include a picture um, just so she was there. So that's myself and Melissa on one side and uh, Jackie and Zolt, two of, the, um, two of the volunteers on the project. And it was good for, for the group to be recognised in that way. That's one thing I would suggest to you. Obviously, awards, they're kind of ubiquitous uh, regionally, but they can be a pain to apply for. Some of them you have to apply for, and it was good for us to apply for this to get recognition for the group, I found. So, we'll get rid of that picture of me. So, any, any learning we have from the project? I think, I think I'm reprising things that have already been said, not only in this session, but earlier on today. But working in partnership really does need to have clarity on all sides. Be clear on what you want, both from your own organisation and ask any other organisations and any volunteers what they want. What do you want and what do we want? Establish that at the, out the outset. Further on from that, the most difficult thing for me uh, was facilitating creativity from the group rather than driving the project myself. I'd never done that before. Um, I've called that facilitating chaos, which is basically how it felt. Um, I was drawing creativity from other people into practical outcomes, concrete outcomes. I'm much better at that now having done it. Um, but I, that was the most difficult thing for me and uh, I found that most rewarding at the end as well. 
Moving on from that, I would also say that ensuring uh, an effective and practical legacy is an important point. I mean, our resource box is an obvious example of that, but the Universal, group, the Universal Roots group has also been involved in further community projects that the service is delivering uh, since then, and they are now an embedded part of the service. Again, that's another, um, that's another theme from today, I think. Another theme that uh, I'll echo is uh, ending on a quote. It was either a quote or a song, so you've got lucky. Um, this is a quote from a volunteer on the project. I've learned ever such a lot and I'm enriched by working with the groups and meeting the people I've met. The beautiful thing about it, just look about the room, is the mixed cultures and what is happening here. And that's what I found so rewarding about working on this. And that's me. Thank you.